Welcome back. Uh, after the break, all of you, um, we're going to continue our studies on uh, the books of the Bible and hope you enjoyed uh, studying uh, Romans and the other books uh, in the last semester. Uh, so in this class, we'll be studying uh, 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, uh, Titus and um, uh, Philemon. All of these are uh, personal uh, episodes or letters that Paul writes to individuals. Uh, it's a good, uh, le uh, uh, you know, letters where we can learn about church administration, how to relate to uh, different people in different age groups in our churches, uh, how to teach the uh, uncompromised word of God, the doctrines in God's word, um, you know, and how to protect uh, churches, our churches, um, the people that God has entrusted to us, the sheep under our care, uh, with the truth of God's word and and, uh, from all false teachings and uh, doctrines. So it's going to be a good learning experience. So what we're going to learn uh, from 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, uh, Titus and uh, Philemon, which are Paul's uh, letters to uh, 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 Timothy, Titus and uh, Philemon. I'd also uh, you know, like to welcome all our e-learning students, a welcome uh, to this course and uh, just pray that you would be blessed and it will be a good learning experience uh, for all of us. Uh, because, before we look at the introduction to First Timothy, uh, can one of you lead us in prayer, please? Anyone? Can I pray? Yes, thank you, Divya. Thank you, thank you, Abba. Thank you, Lord, for this uh, wonderful time that you've given us, uh, Lord. The, it's a new year, it's a new beginning, Father Lord. Uh, we commit all our ways into your hands, Abba, that you guide us, Lord. You show us your ways, teach us your paths, Lord. Guide us in your truth. Lord, our hope is in you, Father, all day long, Lord. Even as we um, endeavor, Lord, to learn uh, these books in the Bible, uh, Father Lord, you speak to us through Pastor Selena. You anoint her, equip her, Father, empower her, Lord, uh, to speak your very words, uh, Father, and uh, these life-bringing words, uh, uh, the words that are sharper than a double-edged sword, Abba, let it uh, do its work in us, Lord. We completely submit uh, to the working of the Holy Spirit in each of our lives, Father, committing all the students who are doing uh, Father, uh, all the different modes of learning for these courses, Father Lord, I pray your blessing over each one and over all the faculty, Father, uh, in APC Bible College. Thank you and praise you in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Divya. Also wishing all of you a very, very blessed New Year. Uh, God's blessings on each one of you and may just be a more glorious year for each one of us. Okay, so we look at uh, First Timothy. Uh, uh, I've already uh, posted the um, uh, the notes on the stream page on Friday, so you can access the notes there. Um, so, uh, any um, idea about First Timothy? Has any of you read this book before? If you have, you have any knowledge of who Timothy is? We all know about Paul, uh, but any of you can share your insights, your thoughts on who Timothy is or uh, your learning experience or what God, what you received when you read uh, First Timothy as part of your uh, daily Bible reading, your personal study, your meditation. Anyone like to share? Who's Timothy? Anyone knows who's Timothy? Okay, uh, Timothy was uh, Paul's mentee Can and I, Paul. Uh, yes, yes, Charles. Yes, um, Timothy is a son to a lady. I think Lois, and then Lois has a mother, 
and they are all Christians. I think they are from Greece. That's what I am thinking. And then the, the grandmother and the mother taught Timothy the word of God. And then Peter meets Timothy and picks him up to be his disciple. That's what I can contribute. Thank you, Charles. Uh, thank you, uh, Divya, as well. Yes, uh, Paul mentored uh, Timothy. Uh, he mentored young Timothy. And uh, it was just amazing to see how Timothy was mentored so well by Paul that he took on uh, responsibility of overseeing uh, uh, you know, all the churches uh, in Ephesus and uh, surrounding that uh, region. So, And also he came to a place where he moved from being a son to being a, a, a co-worker, a co-laborer with Apostle Paul. Uh, it must have been such a, a, a wonderful uh, a, a joy and a wonderful experience for Paul to see one of his uh, the people that he mentored, uh, seeing them grow up to that stage where they can uh, take on this important responsibility of overseeing um, you know main churches, major churches in a major uh, uh, city, a metropolis city like. Um, Ephesus and the surrounding regions uh, when Timothy was very, very uh, young. So, um, you know, Paul, ap apart from just being an apostle, a pioneer, uh, somebody who's written uh, most of the, uh, the, uh, the books in the, in the New Testament, uh, establishing churches, uh, doing such uh, extensive work uh, for the kingdom of God, also was somebody who built up teams who worked in he worked in teams with co-workers co-laborers and also mentored uh, young people and uh, you know so the work of the ministry was not hindered after paul was martyred but it was continued by all of these people that he had mentored he had uh, you know he had strengthened in the faith uh, that they have uh, and these people who closely observed um, Paul's life, his ministry, learned from him, just continue to do uh, uh, the work of the Lord and just did such an amazing work after Paul uh, and during Paul's time and after Paul was um, uh, martyred. Uh, so like uh, Charles said, yes, uh, Timothy, um, you know, he his father was Greek and his mother was um, a Jewish. Uh, his grandmother also, and uh, they trained him up in the ways of the Lord. Um, and yes, when Paul came to Derby and Lystra, that is the regions around Galatia, you know, he Paul noticed Timothy, um, and uh, you know, he took on this young uh, man. He must have just been seventeen years old, and uh, you know, from that time on, he trains him, and we see how he uh, oversees this uh, the churches at uh, Ephesus. Okay, uh, so. Just the introduction, uh, you know, Paul during his um, first missionary journey, which we read in Acts chapter 13 and 14, uh, you know, he uh, Paul goes along with uh, Barnabas. He travels with Barnabas uh, throughout the regions of Galatia, uh, which are the three cities of uh, Iconium, Lystra, and Derby. Uh, they're preaching God's word, teaching God's word, uh, and also establishing uh, churches. Uh, so that is what they basically do during uh, the first missionary journey. And during the second missionary journey, uh, which lasted about three years, we see that uh, Paul does not travel along with, uh, with Barnabas as he had done in his first missionary journey because there was a sharp dispute between Paul and Barnabas. Um, uh, sorry, Paul and Barnabas. Paul, uh, Barnabas wanted to take his nephew um, John Mark along with them, but um, uh, you know, Paul did not want to take John Mark because of, uh, uh, you know, he felt that John Mark had deserted them uh, uh, during their first missionary journey. He thought maybe he was not fit uh, for missions, uh, to do mission work, to travel. Uh, and so there was a sharp contention or strife, uh, disagreement between uh, Paul and Barnabas. So uh, Barnabas, you know, takes uh, John Mark and goes on his missionary journey. And uh, Paul, during his second missionary journey, takes Silas along with him. 
uh, and uh, a team of other people and they go to basically places in Asia Minor and Europe and again preaching God's word, teaching in the synagogues and also establishing many local churches uh, there. So when Paul comes to uh, Derby and Lystra, which is the regions of Galatia, which he had uh, visited during uh, his first missionary journey, we we know that Paul, uh, you know, even though he was in, in his second missionary journey or in his third missionary journey, he goes back to the places that he has ministered prior and, um, you know, just to see how the churches are doing, uh, just to encourage them, uh, uh, just to build them up in their faith, strengthen them, uh, kind of bring in order in the churches. So we see he goes back to uh, the region of Galatia, which he had visited uh, during his first missionary journey he comes to derby and lystra and there uh, paul uh, notices uh, timothy and he has him join him in in his team and uh, you know timothy must have been a very young man um, uh, he was just 17 years of age and like i just said you know, uh, his father was Greek and his mother, uh, grandmother was Jewish. So they trained him up in the ways of the Lord. And we know we read this in Acts chapter 16, verse 3, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5, and 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse uh, 15. So we just get a basic background of who Timothy was from these references. Um, but we, we read in these references that, you know, um, and that Timothy was, uh, uh, you know, the believers in that, uh, uh, it was a disciple, uh, mentions him as a disciple in these references, and the believers in that region spoke well of him. So he already had a good reputation, uh, maybe a good believer, uh, strong in his faith, zealous for the Lord, just like any other Jew. Um, and so, you know, Paul, um, uh, it, it might have just strengthened uh, Paul's belief and trust in him that this was a capable man uh, uh, to go on mission trips, somebody who could be a co-laborer, uh, somebody who he can uh, mentor in the faith and build him up uh, uh, so that he can also be, uh, 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 you know, do mission work, extend God's kingdom along with uh, Paul. But we also see that in these references, we read that, you know, Paul circumcised Timothy uh, so that he could uh, minister, you know, uh, without any problem, without any difficulty among the Jews, because we know that, uh, uh, you know, uh, many of the people that Paul was teaching and preaching to were the Jews and the Greeks. Uh, of course, the Romans as well, but Greeks mostly and Jewish people. And the Jews were not, uh, 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 you know, uh, would not receive anything or accept the truth from somebody who had not, you know, was following the Jewish rituals, even though, uh, you know, um, uh, Timothy was half Jew, um, but maybe he was not circumcised. So he has him circumcised so that there is no hindrance uh, for for him to minister the gospel and for people uh, uh, to receive the gospel. So sometimes we might think that, you know, um, people have to receive us just as we are. You know, we don't have to, uh, you know, dress in a certain way or behave in a certain way or act in a certain way. Uh, but sometimes, you know, those things, simple things like just the way we dress, the way we conduct ourselves, uh, maybe in some churches they would not like uh, like us to wear footwear on uh, on the pulpit. Some churches they are okay. Uh, some churches you can just go and preach with jeans on, but some churches they won't accept you that way. So you know, uh, based on uh, you know all of this, we need to see that nothing uh, is a hindrance or stopping us from from people receiving. Uh, what you know, God has laid in our heart, or what we are going to minister to uh, to them. So it's okay, you know. Sometimes we don't have to be very uh, uh, strict or hold on and say people have to uh, change their mindsets, have to change. Uh, but it's important that we uh, change. We just um, uh, you know fit into where people are able to accept us, receive. Um, from us. Of course, you know, Paul was not somebody who was uh, uh, con uh, who was saying that everyone who had to minister had to be circumcised. We know that we read it in Acts. I'm sure you learned Acts. So you went through Acts in the last semester. 
uh, you, we see that he goes to Jewish council and uh, he talks about this and then um, the elders the other the other apostles you know they agree that it's not necessary that uh, you know people have to be uh, circumcised so uh, even though it was uh, there was room given for that but yet paul you know has timothy circumcised so that uh, he can travel and minister uh, you know comfortably without any hindrances well, let's look at a church in Ephesus um, because uh, Timothy is basically uh, overseeing the churches there at Ephesus. So during Paul's second missionary journey, uh, Paul, uh, you know, makes a brief stop at um, Ephesus. Uh, he preaches in the synagogues at Ephesus. We read about this in Roman, in sorry, in Acts chapter eighteen, uh, verses. Um, 18 to 10 and verse 19. He does not stay there for too long um, uh, during his uh, second missionary journey uh, because he wanted to go to Jerusalem. He wanted to reach there. He had plans to go to Jerusalem. So he leaves Aquila and Priscilla at uh, Ephesus and then he moves on to uh, uh, Jerusalem. But during uh, Paul's third uh, missionary journey, uh, which we read in Acts chapter 18, verses 23 to Acts 21, verse 15. Uh, we see he spent a good three years in the city of Ephesus uh, during his third missionary journey. Uh, he preaches in the in the synagogue for three months. Uh, but you know, uh, even though he preached there for three months, uh, we read this in Acts chapter 19, verse 8. Uh, we see that you know. The hearts of the people were so hardened, uh, they did not believe, and they started speaking evil of uh, the way, uh, you know, the truth uh, to Jesus Christ uh, uh, before the other people. So Paul felt that it was, you know, useless or baseless to continue uh, ministering or teaching to them in the synagogues. And also he might have perceived that, you know, because these people were speaking evil of the way, of, uh, of the gospel to others there can be an uproar Pe uh, the jewish people can come against him it will be a hindrance to his ministry so he quietly withdraws with his disciples and he uh, begins teaching and preaching in this uh, tyrannous hall uh, which becomes like a school for him uh, and this is a place where he, you know, he teaches uh, many young uh, men and women as well. I think, you know, it's not mentioned, but many young men, yes, because uh, many of them are uh, trained uh, in the word in, uh, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, they launch out into ministry and um, they go out into places surrounding Ephesus. Uh, uh, you know, and that is how we read about the seven churches in um, uh, of Asia in Revelation chapter two and three. Uh, the seven churches uh, of Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Titeria, uh, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea, which is all of these uh, uh, churches which are established. Uh, close by to the city of Ephesus and it was um, it was it was this time you know when Paul was teaching in this uh, the school of the, of the Terranus Hall uh, where he was teaching and preaching and mentoring people uh, that many of them launched out his co-workers who were there with him his team you know they launched out and many young people as well launched out in the surrounding areas were ministering there and as a result of their ministry their preaching and teaching uh, they, you know, led to um, uh, establishing of churches, and uh, these are the uh, some of the churches that we read of, are the seven churches uh, of Asia that we read in Revelation chapter two um, and verse uh, three. So we see that, you know, the when Paul was in. Um, in Ephesus, there was a great work that he was doing, not just preaching and teaching and establishing uh, the church at Ephesus or the churches at Ephesus, but also training people, uh, building up young people and, uh, you know, sending out teams to uh, areas surrounding uh, them, uh, you know, so that they could preach and teach and establish churches. So this kind of gives us, um, a, 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 you know, a good idea of how, you know, to be part Pastors. Some of us are going to be pastors, apostles, 
uh, in the future we are some of you are already past this now uh, so not just focusing on you know uh, on just preaching and teaching the word but also how equ to equip young people uh, train young people mentor them and send them out uh, in the surrounding areas to go out and to uh, you know start churches to minister to preach uh, and to extend the, the kingdom of God. So good thing that we can learn from, uh, you know, uh, Paul's style of what he did, of his ministry, of how he extended God's kingdom. So Paul was not just thinking about, hey, you know, I have to do everything. I want to do it. If uh, I have to start churches in the surrounding areas in Ephesus, it has to be me. Uh, but we see here that Paul was somebody who co-labored with others. Uh, he co-worked alongside with others. He gave the others the best benefit of uh, you know doing what he was doing uh, of uh, copying his style of you know how to preach teach and launch out and 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 to start new churches and uh, and that is how you know uh, the word just spread and and the kingdom of god just extended in such a mighty way so i think this is a good um, style a good model that uh, we can follow uh, this is something that even jesus did you know um, Jesus did not just uh, preach and teach, but what he basically first did was, you know, he built up a strong team who would carry on uh, the work after, uh, you know, he's, uh, he was going back to his father, after he returned back to his father. So this, this 12 apostles were there, 11 of them continued the work and more of them, you know, we see that uh, Jesus sends out the 12 and he sends out the 70 uh, Others, so you know, a good model for us to follow. Some of us think that it's it's I, me, myself who has to do everything, uh, you know, so that everyone acknowledges you as a leader. But it's important for us to train others, uh, equip them, so that they can go out and uh, minister um, as well. So good, uh, a model to uh, follow. We also see that uh, the city of Ephesus. Uh, you know, was a very uh, important city in uh, Asia, in the region of Asia Minor. It was a metropolitan city, a metropolis in Asia. Um, and it was very famous city because it had the temple of uh, Dinah uh, or uh, Artemis, which we also read uh, uh, in, in Acts. So it's temple of Dinah and the other name is also Artemis. Uh, and we we know that this temple which uh, which existed uh, for this deity uh, you know uh, was the largest building that was there it was one of the seven wonders of the world uh, it was constructed of pure marble and the streets that were leading to this temple were also uh, paved with marble and it took 220 years to construct this whole uh, temple so the whole city of ephesus um, their whole uh, ideology, their philosophy, their way of living, their style of living, um, their lifestyle, everything was centered around this uh, deity and um, and this uh, 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 Diana, this deity was, uh, you know, a multi-breasted goddess. Uh, we'll we'll talk about it more when we're looking at uh, in detail uh, when we're studying uh, First and Second Timothy. Uh, and the Ephesians, the people at Ephesus uh, believed that, you know, uh, this deity just fell down from the sky. We read about this in uh, Acts chapter 19, verse uh, 35. Uh, during Paul's ministry here in Ephesus, we see that uh, we also read in Acts chapter 19 uh, that, you know, Paul did extraordinary, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, miracle signs and wonders. The supernatural uh, work was so uh, prevalent and evident that people just touching his uh, handkerchief or his apron that he used, you know, people were, um, uh, were healed, restored. Um, and uh, it, it was, you know, it was um, something that was a talk of the town, the whole city. Uh, and um, uh, there was um, many people who tried to uh, imitate Paul, 
uh, especially uh, you know the Jewish uh, people some of them were uh, casting out demons and they were casting out the demons in the name of uh, the God of you know that, that Paul uh, believed in and uh, that he was uh, preaching about and uh, we see that uh, you know the seven sons of Sceva who was a, a, a Jewish priest uh, they also went around you know casting out demons uh, and uh, we read about this in Acts chapter 19 and the when they went to a home uh, um, to you know uh, 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 set free a man who was demon possessed the demon tells the man Paul I Jesus I know Paul I know but who are you and you know uh, the demon just leaves this man comes on them the seven sons and you know beats them up uh, black and blue and they they run naked and we see that uh, it was uh, it was known throughout the city and after this people had such high uh, regard and fear and reverence for the name of uh, Jesus and there was great fear uh, for the name of Jesus and um, and uh, reverence for him and after this we see we read also in Acts chapter 19 that you know people many of them repented uh, they turned from uh, witchcraft and sorcery and black magic and uh, we know that you know all of these uh, uh, you know the scrolls on witchcraft sorcery everything was burned so uh, a great impact that uh, Paul's ministry in the name of Jesus had or the gospel had in the city of of, um, Ephesus at Ephesus uh, another major uh, thing that we uh, we can see is uh, of Paul's ministry is that he trained many young leaders um, so some of the names are given uh, in the notes uh, uh, so Peter and uh, uh, Aristarchus Secundus uh, Gaius Timothy uh, Tychicus Trophimus uh, Erastus um, uh, Philemon um, and Epaphras, both who were from the city of Colossae, who were overseeing the churches uh, at uh, Colossae. Of course, Erastus, who was from Corinth, uh, uh, and um, you know, uh, uh, Tychicus from Trophimus of Asia. All of them uh, were part of uh, 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 of Paul's um, team, were doing the ministry, and uh, so we see that. Um, uh, you know, uh, all of them were built up and trained uh, um, by Paul here in uh, in the city of um, uh, Ephesus. So all important major leaders were trained here and grew, you know, mentored and uh, set uh, them, and they were they launched out and uh, you know ministered in various uh, cities as well. So Paul also raised leaders um, uh, who he called as elders or overseers to shepherd. Uh, the believers at Ephesus um, and um, you know later on we see towards the end of his third missionary journey uh, on his way to Jerusalem um, you know we also see that Paul meets with the leaders of the church at Ephesus at Miletus and you know he uh, he just talks about he talks to them because he's heard that there are a lot of false teaching false doctrines uh, that he also encourages uh, Timothy uh, you know to teach the truth um, and to be aware of these false doctrines so it was even before he writes his letter to Timothy there was this major problem of false teaching and false doctrines uh, in the church at Ephesus uh, you know which is nine years prior to he, him writing first Timothy he meets all of these elders um, in, in his third missionary journey um, on his way to uh, Jerusalem where he's going to you know be imprisoned his first imprisonment and then his again his second imprisonment where he's martyred later on but he um, he meets with the elders who he had appointed in the churches at Ephesus and uh, we see that he is you know telling them about uh, be aware of these false teachers false doctrines what to do church administration uh, but we see that uh, you know uh, things did not change and uh, you know do the after his uh, during the end of his third missionary journey uh, Paul um, after his Roman first Roman imprisonment when he was set free uh, he goes to um, um, 
Crete where he ministers there, he leaves uh, Titus there to oversee the churches at Crete and then he goes on to Ephesus um, and uh, he leaves uh, Timothy, young Timothy there uh, uh, to oversee the churches there because um, the problem had not yet settled uh, of false doctrines and false teachings and church administration and things that had to be done uh, at the uh, churches at um, Ephesus. So, you know, after his third missionary journey, we see that Paul visits uh, Jerusalem and uh, he's imprisoned there and, you know, uh, for two years. And then, like I said, you know, during this time, uh, you know, when he was in prison, he writes the epistles of, to the church at Colossae. Uh, he writes to Philemon, the church at Ephesus and the church at Philippi. So he's writing Philippians, Ephesians, uh, Philemon and Colossians. And then, um, so we see that he has a great burden for the church at Ephesus uh, because he's, um, you know, just before uh, this, he meets with the elders before he goes to Jerusalem. And then he feels a need to write to them. And uh, again, we see that, um, you know, after he's released from his first Roman imprisonment, uh, you know, he goes to Crete and then um, where he leaves um, uh, Titus and then he goes to Ephesus uh, and he feels the need uh, to leave uh, uh, Timothy there because um, maybe there was a lot of problem in the churches there. They needed somebody mature to oversee. And also Paul knew maybe he's drawing, uh, you know, end to his days and um, uh, there was a need for someone to uh, consolidate the work, build up the church, strengthen the churches there at uh, Ephesus. And so it was a very important uh, uh, assignment, appointment that he gives young Timothy. Uh, and then he writes to him two letters because, um, you know, just to encourage him. Um, so he's, uh, after he leaves uh, Timothy, at uh, at um, Ephesus, he goes on to Macedonia, and maybe he's he's heard about um, you know maybe Timothy was feeling it too heavy or burdensome to take on the role and the responsibility. So he writes to him, encouraging him and telling him what to do. And um, even as uh, you know, during his second Roman imprisonment, uh, you know Paul knows he's drawing. Uh, to the end of his uh, his life here on earth and um, uh, he sees the importance of uh, writing again to Timothy uh, and encouraging him because he was his son in the faith somebody who's mentored him and so he writes uh, second Timothy as well okay so we see that Timothy uh, served alongside Paul for about 18 years um, when Paul left Timothy at Ephesus he was about uh, 34 years of age um, and uh, the churches at Ephesus were like uh, the spiritual headquarters for the other churches that Paul had, uh, I mean, Paul's uh, co-laborers, his team, the people that he mentored had started around those regions. I talked, I told you about the seven churches of Spridna, Pergamos, Titeria, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. So we see that you know, young Timothy had a huge responsibility, not just of looking at uh, one church at Ephesus, but there were many churches at Ephesus and also uh, the, the churches surrounding Ephesus uh, in Asia, minor the regions around Ephesus and, um, you know, the great responsibility that uh, Timothy had and hence uh, the need for Paul to write to him and encourage him, encourage him, encourage him encourage him through these two uh, letters so that he can continue uh, the good work that God has started uh, through him in um, the city of Ephesus. Any questions so far on the, on the introduction? Anyone has any questions? Are you all clear about uh, Paul's missionary journey and how he started the churches at Ephesus? the work, the city of Ephesus, and about Timothy. Anyone has any questions? All of you there? Yeah. 
yes, no. Okay, uh, so Divya's question is, do we know why Timothy was chosen? Uh, not exactly, but um, uh, like I said in um, uh, Acts chapter, um, yeah, in Acts chapter uh, 16, you know, um, sorry, one minute. Acts chapter 16, verses 1 to 5, uh, you know, Paul notices Timothy. Maybe it was just a prompting of the Holy Spirit, uh, you know, prompting Paul uh, 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 to choose Timothy as somebody who was potential uh, minister uh, or somebody who was poten had the potentiality to, you know, the potential to, uh, to build God's kingdom, to preach, to teach. Uh, so I'm sure it was... Uh, the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we know that Paul was um, always dependent on the Holy Spirit, was led by the Holy Spirit at all times. So uh, uh, I'm I'm hundred percent sure, even though it's not given the Bible, but you know, uh, uh, just from Paul's writing, what he says, you know, he says in other places, "Do I do it on my own? But it's it's not mine, but it's what." The Spirit of the Lord is telling me or leading me or God telling me to do. So, uh, you know, God, the Holy Spirit would have made Paul notice uh, Timothy. Uh, the other thing that we have from Scripture is that, uh, you know, um, uh, people in that region spoke well of him. Uh, so maybe he, Paul would have seen good leadership uh, capabilities, uh, res responsibilities that... Uh, uh, that uh, Timothy, uh, uh, you know, shouldered well his his uh, relationship with people to be well known, to be well accepted, to be spoken well of. Uh, it, you know, you need to be uh, uh, well known. You have to have that good communication skills. Uh, you know, that relationship with people. So maybe he saw him as a good, you know, person of a good. Uh, somebody who was good enough to you know build god's kingdom uh maybe teachable somebody who is able to receive young who he can uh build up and uh entrust the work of the kingdom to him so that is all we know and we can infer from uh from what we have in scripture and mm. uh, also looking at what scripture says we see that uh you know um timothy did prove himself you know, if Paul had to entrust him with uh, this great responsibility, then, you know, uh, Timothy would have proven himself faithful, shown himself uh, faithful, shown himself as capable uh, for, uh, you know, Paul to leave someone as young as Timothy uh, to oversee the churches there. And just imagine to, you know, he was young and also the churches already had leaders because, Nine years before he writes First Timothy, he um, meets the leaders at Miletus and uh, he's speaking to them. So all of these leaders were already maybe very mature, older people. And uh, Paul knew the hindrances that Tim young Timothy will have to face when he tells people, you know, this is what you need to do. This is what you're not supposed to be doing. Uh, but he had this, um, uh, you know, he had this uh, confidence that, um, you know, Timothy would do it, his job well and uh, he would be able to uh, get people around, uh, relate to them and uh, because of what the prior experiences that he had and he's heard about him. So, yes, that is why he would have chosen him. Good question, yeah, thank, Divya. Thank you. Yeah, I was just wondering because he's just 17 years old and uh, if Paul would have noticed him uh what a testimony would have it have been uh yeah thank you thank you first thank you but paul gives his uh, responsibility when he was almost 34 years old so he's grown and mentored uh yes elisha says in my church before you are called into full-time ministry in the local church community must speak well of you yes i think that's an important thing speak well of you you know even when you're doing your ministry because people see our life 
So we, uh, you know, through this introduction, we just learned some good important points about uh, Paul's ministry, how he handled it, how he extended his ministry, you know, working in teams, training young people, uh, giving them the opportunity to launch out, to start churches, how he goes around strengthening churches, uh, and what he does even after he goes to a place, he goes back, ministers, or if he's not able to go, he meets with the uh, leaders, you know, he meets with the team, how he writes to them, how he uh, entrusts people with responsibilities of overseeing the church. So all this, all of this is something that uh, of church administration, uh, church leadership or responsibilities that we can learn even as we looked at the introduction to uh, First Timothy and from Paul's ministry and from his life. Okay, anyone else has any things? Anyone, anyone wants to say anything? No? Okay, so uh, before we um, look uh, at First Timothy in detail, before we do an, uh, kind of an exegetical study, um, uh, let's all turn to First Timothy in your Bibles. I hope all of you have your Bibles alongside with you. So I'd like all of you to quickly read uh, First Timothy. I'll just give you some time. And then I'd just like to, uh, you know, a couple of us to highlight uh, one or two things that, uh, you know, that the Spirit of God ministered to you even as you read, something that just, uh, you know, popped out of Scripture, the pages, something that's leapt out, something that uh, you were reminded that you, you heard, uh, you know, years back, something that you read, something God spoke to you through First Timothy. Um, so we'll just do that before we um, look in, uh, do a detailed study of chapter one, okay? So can we just take some time to read quickly through First Timothy, please, all of us? And then we'll come back and just uh, uh, share any words that really ministered to you, some words that, you know, some phrases that leapt out of scripture, something that spoke to you or the, the Spirit of God ministered to you even as you were reading. So let's just take a couple of minutes to do that now. And when you finish, uh, you can just, um, you know, just indicate by, uh, you know, uh, posting it on the chat section so I know all of you are done. Yes, First Timothy chapter 1. Yes. Not the entire book, just First Timothy chapter 1.
Did you all finish reading? Okay, uh, so I think a couple of you have done uh, reading. So you like to share anything that really like to highlight something that really caught your attention, um, something that just leapt out of the pages of scripture for you, something that you remembered God speaking to you before or God spoke to you right now. Anything you like to share from First Timothy? Yes, Charles. Thank you so much. Um, I see uh, when Paul is writing to Timothy and is telling him about the people that are injurious, that are bad, and then he supports this scripture by showing him that he himself, Paul, was also in that he was really bad, but he was doing it in unbelief. And now he is, he received mercy and now he is different. So he is warning him, telling Timothy that those people, those who are many stealers, those who are thieves and all that, but also even me, I received mercy. So I am looking at this that I, that he, he was supposed to also speak the word of God to those so that the mercy of God can work in them as it did in the life of Paul. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. Good way of looking at it. Thank you very much. OK, we'll stop here. We'll pause here and come back. And after break, you all can share. Uh, we'll go for a break and come back. I'll see you at uh, 11. OK, thank you.